let's let's say and the guideline that I've always heard is to charge at 1C. Let's say that you consistently charge at 1C and let's say you discharge at perhaps as much as 45C uh, maybe with peaks higher. That's a, that's what yeah. I would call a typical mini quad use. Yeah, if you consistently charge at 1C um, from the day you get the battery, you will potentially, you may not, but you will potentially see a slight increase in capacity after the first few charges. And but, that would support the break-in concept. Right. If you but, don't but, ever but, charge but slow. There's no, but there's no argument where you need to discharge it slower in the first few charges to prolong its life that you can see. Or is there? It depends on how much they're discharging it. Let's say, that, um, let's say to 3.5. No. I played with a couple of 18650s just to because I was curious, um, which is how I got a burn mark in my workshop. But <laughs> uh, I discharged them down to the manufacturer's minimum voltage, mm -hmm. and I discharged them which at 2.5 or 3.2. Yeah, uh, with those batteries, it was 2.6 or 7. Okay. Um, which was like if if it go do not go below this voltage. Right. So I did a discharge down to that voltage at a ridiculously low. Uh, current, mm -hmm. so that I was I was plucking ions off of that anode. You know, I see you were you were going so slow because you were yeah. going so low. You didn't want to damage it. Well, yeah. I want my goal, uh, my methodology for it was I wanted to pull off all of the actual available uh, capacity without scavenging, without doing any damage to my right. cathode or anode. Right. And then I did a slow charge. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was quarter amp. Okay. I started at like 0.1 amp yep. and then peaked at a quarter amp and just did a really ridiculously low, ridiculously slow charge. Okay. I saw uh, out of 10 cells, I got like the ones that I did a regular just out of the box used them uh, versus the ones that I did this ultra slow discharge, ultra slow charge one time. Mm -hmm. I did see a noticeable increase in capacity what kind of messed with me is that battery's initial increase in in capacity only lasted for five or six cycles mm -hmm. before it so, became exactly the same as a battery that i treat it, normally it really sounds like what we're saying here is that some methods of charging and discharging produce more capacity than others but the idea that the first few cycles are particularly special if you get quality batteries from a quality manufacturer, it doesn't hold water. No, and it, it's just like come at, anytime you get a battery that's new to you or has been in storage for greater than a week or two, um, it's not a bad idea to assume that your first couple of cycles or your first cycle after being stored or unused isn't going to be optimal. Yeah. Or aren't going to be optimal. Yeah. Whatever. Um, yeah. And a slow charge. And a, honestly, a slow charge and a slow discharge is the best thing for a battery. So it, just because you discharged your right. battery to what you would consider to be normal, right? Um, I, I've seen some people, and I think it's not a bad idea, I wouldn't tell everybody to go do this because I don't think it matters well, that much, Yeah, is to go, go ahead and put the battery in your charger. And if you've got one of these eye chargers and stuff, yeah. you can tell it to discharge yeah. to a certain level you can, and, and then you can charge. Even, you can even cycle it if you want to. Yeah. So, and so you can do a if you do a slow that, discharge, slow charge, you will get a little more capacity. But we're stopping before we use our capacity, right. so it's really not important. What we're really concerned about, <laughs> I think, is at least in the in the you know acro and racing world, is sag, is peak amps and sag. I think those are the two things that I feels like I'm most concerned about, because if you get peak amps that lets you do you know strong punches or or tight turns. And if you're sagging, it means you have to back off the throttle, and it means that you're going to end your flight sooner. When you push the throttle, the battery sags so much that now um, you, I'm concerned that I'm going to be damaging it. So when I see the battery sagging to 13.2 or 13.3, I feel like this is not good for my battery, and I need to just bring it in. But yeah, you're and suggesting that on that's your not particularly bad for the battery. Okay, so the the voltage that it sags to isn't the metric i would use for damaging the battery it's the voltage it sags to under what load sure if you're pushing 100 amps and it's sagging down to 13.2 um yeah but it's not the 13.2 number that's hurting your battery it's the 100 amps okay 
Um, if you if you're pushing and your battery's sagging below uh, a nominal five three point two volts per cell, that's the, that's uh, like the do not exceed. At that point, you're like that done. We're done. At that point, okay. your battery's going to be probably pretty hot. Yeah. But your battery's getting hot whenever you're doing those excessive amps. Sure. Not it doesn't have anything to do with the sag. The yeah. sag is a result of right the excessive the sag. Amp. The sag is a result of the the electrons, if you will, being turned into heat instead of being turned into work. Yeah, more, more the energy is the sloppy. energy is getting because yeah. it, it's it's backing up and it can't get yeah. and do what it needs to do, so it's it's turning the temperature. Do you know anything about the high volts? What are they doing differently in the chemistry there to to say? I mean, in theory, you've said that you could charge a four a, a nominal uh, you know standard light bulb of four point three five without immediate sort of catastrophic damage. Uh, so why are the high volts different? And they are different, by the way. I've heard it suggested by some that the high volts are just, they're marketing BS, that they're just standard LiPos, and that somebody figured out that you could charge a standard LiPo to 435, and it won't blow up in your face, and they started selling them, oh, high volts. But I've measured them, and they do perform better. They are yeah. they are just better. I, I, I have a test I'm going to do where I'm going to charge a standard LiPo to 435 and compare it to a high volt. I haven't done that yet. But the high Get volts, one of those little bags. The high volts definitely, yeah, I'll do it outside on the on the driveway, not in my house. But the high volts do perform. You take a high volt thirteen hundred and a standard, and and the high volts have like they have lower internal resistance, and they seem to deliver current better, even when you don't charge them all the way to four three five. And I wonder what's different about their internal chemistry. When I was looking at Revo Electric site. Revo has the standard light post. They have the blend 435, and they have another one, and I don't remember what the voltage was, but it's like 457, so presumably they've got an even higher voltage cell coming out. So, you know, there, there's what's going on in there? Okay, so it's going to, um, and because I remember I mentioned chemistry at the beginning. Yeah. The uh, the electrolyte matters. Yeah. Um, the cathode uh, matters. So you're you're changing the difference, the the uh, the electrode potential difference between the cathode and the anode by changing the chemistry. Most lithium batteries that we're using are going to be uh, lithium cobalt, mm -hmm. so they're going to have a nominal voltage of I three point six, three point seven. Yeah. Um, I don't. I haven't found anything talking about what the cathode or electrolyte difference is in the what they're selling as HV batteries. Right. Um. But I do know that there are certain battery chemistries. Um, I'll go the opposite direction. Lithium iron phosphate has a nominal voltage of three point two. Absolutely. Um, but it, it can be discharged ridiculously so you're hard. You're, you're suggesting that this is not necessarily the high volts are not just like uh, like for example, if you think about the graphene batteries, they're they're the, uh, fundamentally there's the same internal chemistry, but they have a different uh, design of I, I think it's the cathode that allows them to perform better. Whereas you're suggesting the high volts are a fundamentally different chemistry that produces a different nominal voltage, and in fact the yeah, nominal voltage is fifteen point two for a high volt. I say that with um, serious trepidation. Right. Uh, same like right. the graphene batteries. I don't. I think that they are. I think that they do have graphene in them, but do they qualify as graphene batteries? Yeah, that's a philosophical question. I know people get very angry about that. They should have more capacity. If you see it, they shouldn't be saying that. Oh, it's a graphene battery, so it has a higher discharge rate. The main benefit of graphene in a battery is higher capacity. So they're, if they're still selling you a thirteen hundred milliamp hour battery that's the exact same size as another lithium battery that's thirteen hundred milliamp hours, well, they're actually bigger. They're actually bigger and heavier substantially. The, now, some of that, okay. the, some of that is because... So in that situation, they're dropping the capacity uh, so that they can claim a higher C rating you know, because I, they're getting yeah, more I don't, out of higher yeah, capacity. I, I, interesting, interesting. So the graphene increases the capacity. So then Which you... It does have, increase your... I mean, because... So if you've got a lithium... If you've got a 1,300 milliamp hour battery that's three inches long... Yeah, yeah. And then you've got a 1,700 milliamp hour battery that's four inches long... Right. And they're made identically, except for the size. Right. The seventeen hundred milliamp hour, Absolutely. and the, so that means they have the same C rating. Absolutely. The seventeen hundred milliamp hour battery produces more current. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So if the graphene battery is bigger than right. a similarly uh, specced lipo. Yeah. So in that case, it's by, probably by that the same as a, by that a logic, the, the graphene battery should perform similarly to a higher amp rating, amp hour milliamp hour rating, or amp hour rating, uh, standard lipo. Yeah, because they're most likely BSing the C rating. 
Uh, um, sorry, out there, yeah. I, I, and I, most of the most of the heat happens at the anode anyway. Right. So if they are using some graphene to make the anode a little bit more efficient, it'll heat up less, which will give it a higher effective C rating. And they, yeah, and they also talk about the graphene's being very good for cycle life, for pack life. There's somebody who claims they've been running continuous tests on their and their graphene at like 900 cycles is only showing you know, whatever, 10% reduction in capacity, or I don't know the numbers. But, oh, I believe that. Yeah. Graphene's super efficient for cycle life. Um, yeah. The problem is graphene isn't uh, that's the thing. as physically stable. That's so the, and, and that's the thing. People say, I get, I, they say, I'm going to get 900 cycles out of my graphene. I'm like, your, your battery is not going to last 900 cycles on a mini quad because you're going to bash it into a tree and it's going to fall apart. So, yeah, graphene's more fragile. Yeah. All right. Unless it's in a silicon mesh which I doubt any of these guys are doing because we'd be paying a lot for that. That's kind of cutting edge. All right. So we're going to wrap up. Um, let's say, say closing thoughts. Oh, you have a cat too. <laughs> I, have, I have a few. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, closing thoughts. What, what can we take from this? What have we said? The batteries are... Um, go ahead. Yeah, a lot. I, a lot of stuff that's going to get me flamed on the forums for my first video in the quad market. Good. Good. You make, <laughs> you make an, an impact. We won't, yeah, tell anyone, we won't any, tell anyone your real name. Yeah, so ba battery, batteries are, they're not just little gas tanks of electrons. They are physical and, more importantly, chemical structures that are, that a, a battery is a fundamentally chemical process. The ability of these ions to move through the structure of the battery affects the battery's performance. And when we talk about over-discharging or overcharging batteries, damaging them, we're, we're talking about chemical and ultimately, you know, microscopic physical changes in the battery structure. Uh, so that's that's one of the things I think we can take away from this conversation. Um, Break-in. Break-in is probably BS, but maybe not. But how, Wait, you, so yeah, it, how you charge and discharge your batteries matters. The practice is good. How you charge them is important. No one's going to listen and discharge them slowly, so right. at least take half the advice and charge them slowly. Right. And, and, and it, may, Smart chargers. it may be beneficial, perhaps, to take a battery all the way down to three, because a lot of our batteries never hit 3.2 volts per cell. It, you think there may be some benefit to discharging a battery yeah. slowly to 3.2 or even 3.0, but 3.2? Yeah, that's... that's And building it back up again? It's going to be... I would do that every now and then. Like, yeah, if, maybe, you're, if you maybe, have... Like, at the end of the weekend, you know you're not yeah. going to fly on Monday. Go yeah. ahead. It's, it's not going to hurt them. Yeah. Um, and it may salvage a little bit more capacity. Like Most likely not something... Overcharging batteries to four, three, five, not not obviously catastrophic. Both e Final Glide says he does it every day, twenty packs a day, twenty five packs a day for months at a time, and his batteries don't blow up. That's you know, it's just a data. It's an anecdote, but it's a it's also potentially a data point that doesn't immediately yeah. sound sound problematic to you. I wouldn't recommend doing that. No. It, it, if but he, the, he knows what he's doing, and I, there is probably a performance increase that he's seen. Well, sure. I would be surprised if he's not seen a lessened cycle life. But again, I don't know that the, based on what I read up on just to cover my tracks. Yeah. I don't think that charging it to 4.35 is going to do more damage than the way we fly those batteries. Yeah, that's a good but I still insight. wouldn't recommend it because if you've got a shit battery and you do that, it can cause It'll, a problem. Right, right. 4.35. Anytime you go above 4.2, you increase the odds of having a catastrophic failure. And if it, you yeah, got, if you've you got, got mismatched cells and you've yeah, got, absolutely. yeah, I wouldn't recommend it for that very reason and because that's the retailer in me saying right, no, right, but right. he, the dude knows what he's doing so and he's probably, I, yeah, yeah I, I will trust his anecdotal yeah. data way more than most people that I see throw crap up on Facebook. Sure. So, <laughs> All right. Anything else we missed? Um, actually, I wanted to. I have one pro yeah. tip. Yeah. If you want to get better performance out of any quad, any build that you do. Yeah. Uh, reduce excess wire and learn how to solder. Yeah, well. So sure. less wire. The shorter the shorter gauge. battery wires, you would argue? You know, does an, inch, uh, does an inch of 12 or 14 gauge copper really matter that much? Uh, no, but it, it matters if you're running 18. I see. If, if you ever take your quad down and touch a component that's hot, it's less yeah. efficient than it should be. That makes sense. Um, that's a good tip. And if you ever touch a wire and the wire is hot, it's under spec or your solder right. job is bad. Yeah, okay. The last thing, and it's the thing that really got me started wanting to have this conversation, is this idea that you should spec your battery and for what you're doing. The point is that there, that when you look at a battery's performance, I'm used to looking at a battery's performance either from the perspective of capacity, 
where like you're, you're flying a camera platform, you're hovering a lot, and you want a battery that'll put you in the air for 20, 25 minutes, but you're not doing, you're maybe only pulling nine amps or 10 amps. Or you right. look at a battery, you know, sort of surge amps, peak amps. But you, what you really uh, sort of opened my eyes to is that there's something in the middle. And the third thing is the recovery time of the battery. And a battery that's good at maybe peak amps may not be good at recovery. Uh, and then Yeah, peak continual, continual discharge and burst discharge aren't always yeah. – they don't always coincide. They yeah. do coincide frequently because yeah. that's how they're designed. Yeah. But they don't always coincide. And All right. Well, we're going to wrap up. Thank you very much for, uh, for you know, talking to us. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you for uh, popping. YouTube quad cherry. <laughs> yeah, welcome to YouTube. Get ready for flames. <laughs> All right, bye. That's it.